very wet and rainy day there's actually weather warnings in place uh, the train heading into town this morning there was a landslip and uh, they had to stop and turn back I believe the carriage actually got hit by falling rocks uh, and there's a advisory to say work from home if you can which I was going to anyway and there's a lot of flooding we're okay here uh, the road here is closed because it'll be flooded around the corner the number of people who ignore that though is incredible I was just coming to see how high up the stream is yeah that's pretty high check the letterbox while I'm here see it's flooded all the way along there road closed like I say there's a lot of people that doesn't seem to stop so it seems a bit daft yeah, it's fairly wet all around here So all the land around our place was built up when they built the house to get it above the minimal level. So we should be okay here. But, uh, yeah, interesting weather. Out in the shed after work. Uh, the rain keeps coming and going. Apparently there's going to be more heavy rain later, so flooding might get worse. It's quite funny looking out the window, watching the number of people who drive up to the road close sign obviously decide oh that's probably not true so drive past it and then a few minutes later come driving back um, it's like uh, they just don't believe the sign they have to go find out for themselves which is all a bit daft but uh, I am going to start drawing up the wiring diagram for the car I found a website that lets you do online circuit um, diagram type drawings I'm gonna give that a try see if I can draw it up neatly once I figure out where the wires go I'll measure exactly how many I need see what that's gonna to cost to get the uh, the proper color codes but the other thing that happened today is my next lot of Meccano arrived um, this is quite a big lot because it's very heavy so I've taken the tape off the box but I haven't actually looked inside it yet. So let's see. Uh, this is the set that I got that was in the wrong category. It was listed under beauty products. Uh, bulk, bulk beauty products, apparently. So let's see what's in here. Empty egg container. Uh, more spanners. Anytime you buy Meccano, you get a lot more of these spanners. I've got quite a lot of these now. Pot work keys. And screwdrivers. That's good. More wheels. Wheels and shafts and little brass bits and pieces. More sprockets. I've got quite a lot of those now. Loads and loads of these little wheels. Is that Meccano? Not sure. As always with these kind of things, you, you end up sorting out which bits are Meccano and which bits are other random toys. So that we need going through. Even more methano. I think some of this might be not Meccano, but one of the knockoff ones. Uh, gears. Yeah, so this is this is Buzz. 
which is a it's either an Australia or New Zealand knockoff of Meccano uh, but it is compatible lots of bits in here ah wow that's quite nice I don't have any of those that might be useful for my gramophone Needs a little bit of straightening, obviously, but that should be fine. What's in here? Another clockwork motor. Uh, obviously, I've got another one of those somewhere. Be more chain. Ah, now that's nice. This is something I haven't got and I haven't seen before. That's a little Meccano oiler. Oh, that's very cool. Easy built, that's one of these knockoff sets. That's empty, I think. Now this is what I was hoping for. Uh, this is a Meccano electric motor. So, it's missing one of the little terminals that looks like it should go another Meccano clockwork motor this one's a different one that one's a lot bigger Sprockets, little shaft couplers, lots of gears. More little bits and pieces. One of the things when you get these sets of Meccano is all the interesting containers it tends to come in. Because I guess over the years people end up putting the parts into to various different tins and jars and various other things so this one is white pepper apparently Wilson Ralk and Co Bulk and Co Dunedin that's a this will be some kind of period New Zealand tin oh yeah nuts and bolts and couplers and crane hook things all sorts of stuff in there again another a really nice little tin ah, just found the screw terminal for this that's nice Another little clockwork motor and this is another electric motor a reversing one so this whole set cost me I think it was less than I've seen another one of these motors for sale for oh yes that's the switch I suspect both of those will just work. Uh, that's interesting. That's a not Meccano. It looks like a little alarm clock key. Uh, and in here is the usual various rusty bits and pieces. I'm not sure if these are Meccano. There's usually let, uh, writing on them somewhere if it is. There's a, you often find other little clockwork motors in with the Meccano for some reason. 
Uh, I guess people have pulled them out of toys and things like that. Uh, yeah. I've got loads and loads of these. That's a washer. One of the things I do need to do, uh, which will be an interesting little machining project, is build a, a Meccano uh, roller. So basically so that you can flatten things like this out again. And I have some brass bar. I think all I need to do is uh, a stick. sort of machine up something suitable. A lot of this is, is buzz and not Meccano. Uh, obviously a lot of it's quite rusty. But yeah, a really useful haul of parts I would say. This is Meccano, it's marked. Very cool. So once again, I'm going to need to um, clean all of this up. So let's see if these work. So this is the little tank I use for nickel plating. voltage right down So it needs a bit of a clean up, but that definitely goes. Let's try this other one. Ah, cheap crocodile clips. So that's neat. Uh, I don't know the last time these would have run. A long time, I imagine. So those should clean up really well. And I think these will work very nicely in my gramophone. Uh, not sure if the the clockwork motors work.
works quite nicely. It wants to break. And that reverse is okay. I'm pretty sure one of these clockwork or electric motors is is worth more than I paid for this whole lot. So. This one has a slightly smaller key, which doesn't seem to be here, but I have got one of those for um, the other the other motor I've got, so I'm sure, sure I'll be able to get that one to go as well. Looks like it should work. So all in all, that's a really excellent haul of Meccano. Um, I'm really pleased about this. I'll have to see if I can push that dent out. Um, I'll give it a clean. I'll put it through the ultrasonic as well. Clean it out. Yeah, I should be able to get, get in behind there with a little stick or something and push that out. But I've never seen one of these before. Um, nice little Meccano branded oil can. Still with the uh, the little cap on the end, so that's really neat. Uh, so as usual, I now need to sort all of this out and clean it up. Um, but I think these will work. One of these will work really well for the uh, gramophone. Um, maybe I'll use this one because it only has to spin in one direction. And what I'll do is I will get a small electronic speed controller for it um, and use that. Sorted out all of my Meccano. Uh, this stuff here is actually Buzz, which is something different, kind of like a Meccano knockoff. These, I don't know what they're from, but I'm pretty sure they're not Meccano because the hole through the middle doesn't fit Meccano axles. A uh, bunch of wheels here. I need to take all the little screws out uh, and put them in the jar of screws. These are all Meccano ones. I went through and sorted out all the nuts and bolts. You always end up with all sorts of random nuts and bolts when you buy these sets. Uh, this is broken bits and some buzz bits. There's some this is part of a Meccano clockwork motor. It's a little governor. So there are some useful bits in there. That's Meccano string. This is all the plates and girders. Uh, and a couple of, couple of tubes. Get rid of the rubbish. There seems to be all sorts in here. So some of this is later stuff. There's some yellow and black. Uh, there's a couple of blue bits. Uh, I think some of this is actually not Meccano, it's probably Buzz as well, but it's hard to tell what's what, but it's all kind of compatible. Some of these are broken, um, but you can reuse these, you just you just uh, grind the broken bit into the right curve, and of course you've got lots of templates, so that's pretty easy to do. There's more mangled bits, more bits that need to get put through a roller. Um, I have tried it on my big slip rolls, but it tends to, to take a lot of the paint off. Uh, not that that's a big problem. Uh, lots of these little bits. I still have no idea what these ones are for. I've been looking through the catalogs trying to find an example so that I know what it's actually called, but I haven't found it so far. Uh, the clockwork motors all work. One of them was missing its output gear, this gear here, but luckily I found it in the bottom of the box. It had just sort of fallen off. So these do all work. 
including the little one. I don't think this is the proper Meccano key, but that key does work. Uh, these motors, this one is a 20 volt motor. Uh, it's got some sort of label on there. And uh, that does work well. I'm not sure what this one is yet. I need to to look up and see. I think this one must be an earlier one. This one has little um, holes for oiling where the shaft goes through. So that's good. I think these are both Meccano keys. This one's pretty rusty, but uh, that'll come up okay. I might uh, clean this up and nickel plate it. And the coolest thing was the little oil can. Uh, if you take the end off, it's got a little, probably can't even see it, uh, a little spike on the end, which I'm guessing is so you can drop oil on things. And I was able to get most of the dents out. That It was pretty hard. It was pretty, pretty mangled up. But I made a, I just used a little piece of brass bar with a bend in the end and use that to sort of try and burnish this out. Um, that marking there, I thought it was paint on it originally. It's actually brass. It's where the, um, I guess that's nickel plating has worn through. I'm not gonna replate that. I'm just gonna leave that how it is. Uh, I put a little bit of WD-40 in it so it didn't, didn't rust. But uh, that's very cool. So I'll put that, put that somewhere safe in my Meccano desk, I think. Uh, these I should be able to take apart and clean up. I'm not going to try and restore them. I'll just clean them. And I'll have to see which one works well for the gramophone. Uh, there's nothing in this tin and the lid's stuck, so I'm just going to leave that. It's not Meccano, that's Easy Built, which is another Meccano knockoff. Uh, this little pepper tin, I discovered it has got little holes for where you can shake the pepper and the lid rotates to close it. So, nothing to do with Meccano, of course, but a really nice little old tin, um, which is kind of neat. So, the next step will be the usual step, which is... Um, Soak all of those in the evaporus to get all the surface rust off them. Try and clean everything else up. Um, some of these shafts, I'm pretty sure, aren't Meccano, but they're all the right diameter, so they should be fine. So, really good haul. I think that's probably the best haul of Meccano that I've got so far. Um, I think. Including shipping, it cost me just over $100 New Zealand, which is about 50 quid. And I looked up on Meccano Spares. They've got one of these motors secondhand for sale. Just one of these is about £36, I think it was. So all in all, I'm really happy with that. That was a really good find. Uh, it pays to search because things get listed in the wrong categories. So sometimes they're not where you think they are. over at my whiskey, uh, I mean Meccano desk, and um, I decided before I make the gramophone, I really needed to make a, a plate and girder flattener. So this is a machine that lets you take mangled up pieces of Meccano and hopefully flatten them out. If you look online, you'll find various designs for these, but they're all basically the same thing. It's just a three roller setup on a kind of A-frame that lets you adjust the position of the two outer rollers in relation to the middle one. Uh, I made these rollers just based on measurements I found online from the commercial ones. They're 3 8 diameter brass rod. I just happen to have exactly the right diameter brass rod. Uh, luckily I've still got enough left because that'll probably be used for the, the hinge down the bonnet of the Riley, uh, for the middle hinge. And there's all sorts of designs like most things Meccano, there aren't plans for things, there are kind of suggestions. Uh, so I just looked at a few different designs and figured out the basic idea and came up with my own. Um, 
top roller, the gears just so they're all driven. This is pivoted along here, this side of the A-frame. And on the other side I have this little screw mechanism. So turning this wheel moves this in and out and that just moves uh, the second arm and that's what lets you adjust the positioning of it. I just screwed it down to a piece of oak board and the way this works is pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, so this is quite a mangled piece of Meccano. Kind of put it in there. It's going to be a bit tricky with one hand. And you run it through the rollers and it should start flattening it out. Uh, I find you do have to, for really mangled pieces, you do have to, to go through a few times. And I should probably put some some sort of rubber feet on the bottom of this just so it doesn't slip. Uh, obviously it's easier with two hands because sometimes you need to push to get the pieces started. You can also help if you flatten it a bit by hand first. Ugh. Definitely easier with two hands but There we go. But it actually works reasonably well. Um, you can also use it to curl pieces. So if we put this through, straighten it up, and then adjust this, you can see as I turn the screw, this moves down. And then if I run this through the roller, it curves it for me. So you can make cylinders and, and curved plates. Um, you can use it to flatten girders as well. So things like this, you have to open it up quite a long way to get these through. But it will do a fairly good job of flattening these out. Although I find I can just do it with a, a hammer on a block. And that seems to work just as well. Um, it'll be good on pieces like this, which are curved. I think they're meant to be curved. All the ones I've got seem to be curved. But, um, that's basically what it does. I think this is one of those moments where uh, it's like when you own a lathe or you own a mill and you end up making a part for the machine out of the machine, uh, using the machine. I think this is kind of the same thing with Meccano when you you get to the point where you're building things out of Meccano to help you build Meccano. Uh, it's all getting a bit circular, so literally circular. So that works pretty well. Um, the gramophone, I haven't done anything with the rest of the Meccano yet. I need to clean up the motor. Um, obviously I've got the pickup there. I had to move all the parts, uh, but I think I should be able to start that soon, although now I really need to get back on the Riley. Um, my headlamp reflectors have been silvered, they're going to be sent back to me, which is good. So I need to start assembling those, I need to keep going with the wiring on the Riley. Um, I haven't had a chance yet to draw up the wiring diagram, I found some software online. It's basic, simple, uh, electrical circuit drawing software but I think that should work reasonably well um, for doing a wiring diagram for the, what the Riley is going to be like. This is working reasonably well. Sometimes to get the, the kinks out of it you need to put a bit of a curve into it and then take the curve out. And it usually takes multiple passes and it helps to turn them upside down and do a few passes the other way as well. Like I say, it's tricky, tricky with one hand. Um, one thing to note is 
the wheel isn't on the middle roller um, because it made more sense to me to have it on one of the side rollers and then the direction you're turning the wheel is the direction the piece is rolling through the machine. Uh, if you had the wheel on the middle roller you'd have to turn it backwards just through the nature of the gearing. But uh, yeah, you get the idea. And of course, failing that, I've always got my, my bigger rollers. There's the gourds for the people following the gourds. So, So this works as well. I haven't done anything else on the aluminium for the Riley. I'm leaving that for the weekend. Um, it gets a bit unpleasant actually doing it after work at night when it's all it's all dark because it gets cold. And of course the aluminium is really cold to the touch. So it's not so pleasant doing it then. Um, the motors I need to clean up, but they all work, which is great. And I have the parts here ready for soaking in Evaporust. Um, I'll soak them overnight. I'm actually in town tomorrow for work, so that's why I haven't done that yet, because by the time I get home, it's too late to come out here and, and do anything, so I'll leave that for the weekend as well. And that's where I'm at with the Meccano. And like most things Meccano, I'm already modifying it. Uh, I just discovered that I could actually fit another rod through here, which is just at the right height to ride along these rails. And that helps keep this a lot more stable. Um, Meccano is kind of interesting because everything's based on half inch spacings. But when you start stacking strips, uh, of course that starts adding thickness to things and so you end up with the spacings not correct so you actually have to be quite careful how you arrange things like trying to arrange these so that everything lined up and w was even um, I don't know if you can actually see it but to get this beam across here to fit I actually had to put a spacer in here just to get the spacings all exactly right but adding this one extra rod there has um, made this a bit better it's a bit more it's a bit more stable a little bit more more rigid but, um, the other thing to note is these rollers are six inch long which I think is the widest plate size you can get uh, the commercial ones seem to, to come in either three inch or six inch lengths so yeah, I'm pleased with how that came out. Um, it was quite a fun little project, just figuring out how to build it. This is a good example of how the half inch spacing can make things interesting. So if you have these flanged plates and you try to stick two of them together, you then can't put a girder across the top because of the the fold here so you can see the holes don't line up there's no way you can make that work um, but you do get these plates which only have folded ends on two sides rather than four so of course those ones you can get to line up so if I'm trying to build a big base like this for the gramophone I have to use these ones with no flanges in the middle and these shorter ones here on the sides in order to get the holes to line up all the way around um, it's kind of interesting how that works and even these these small ones you can see are slightly shorter um, it's kind of a it's a clever system that they were able to to come up with it so that you've got the maximum flexibility in how you can fit the parts together um, it's really quite neat so 
this is back to how I'm going to lay out the base for this gramophone. Um, I'm not entirely certain how I'll do it and how these will go together. This is another example of where if I need a thing in the middle, how do you how do you fill in the spaces? What uh, what pieces do you need to make that work? I'm not entirely certain. It'd be something like that, and then you'd need a piece that is too wide. Uh, which I don't think exists. So can you go across that way? You end up with a gap of one. It's really it can really be quite puzzling the best ways to do things. And what seems to happen for me at least is you'll build something and then halfway through building it you'll suddenly see a better way of building it and you take everything apart and you put it back together again. Um I guess that's what the fun of it all is. But uh, this is kind of what I'm thinking for the base of the gramophone. And the mechanism will have to go in there. This is the 6 inch pulley I've got. I think I will, I think I'll still make a wooden platter to go on top of that. Uh, just so that the, the entire, the entire record is supported because uh, they're all old and crappy and probably warped so whatever I can do to help hold them flat is going to help a lot.